So greetings from the Pine Barrens of Southern New Jersey. And we're gonna talk about a, a legend today from this area. Also extends into Pennsylvania too. The legend of the Jersey Devil. Yeah, so we are here in the Pine Barrens, not too far from the town of Smithville, which is actually just up a ways through the woods there. And from the smaller town of Leeds Point. And this is where the, the story begins back in about 1735. The 13th child of Mother Leeds. And there could be a kernel of truth to this story, at least surrounding the family. Back in that time, there are records of a family by the last name of Leeds living here, Japheth and Deborah Leeds, and they had 12 children. Like that number 12 is important because it was supposedly the 13th child of Mother Leeds who became the Jersey Devil. So, the story could have been based off of real people. But there's another story that says that the mom's name was Jane as well. But that's the way it is with these stories. So who and what is the Jersey Devil? A lot of you are probably familiar with the story to some extent. As with all legends, there's varying degrees, varying versions of it. So as the typical story goes, when Mother Leeds found out she was pregnant for the 13th time, uh, she cursed the child. I, I don't, God, who knows why. Maybe she didn't want a 13th kid or maybe it was superstition. And according to stories, the child was indeed cursed then. And of course the stories vary. One story, one version says that the child was born normal. And then upon being born, it immediately transformed into the Jersey Devil. Of course, we'll talk what that looked like a little bit later. Some say it was born in that form and just immediately started attacking people in the house um, you know and flew up the chimney and escaped out of the house so there's different variations of that and so what does this creature look like well picture a kangaroo with hooves bat wings <laughs> a horse's head and neck uh, claws a forked tail and horns and big red eyes there you go that's pretty much the jersey devil right there It's been terrorizing the Pine Barrens ever since, depending on who you talk to. Of course, here are some of the pines for which the Pine Barrens are named after. And we'll be talking more about this other places. I'm gonna be camping in the Pine Barrens later today. We'll talk more about the Jersey Devil, some of the sightings and its activities. Maybe we'll go for a little night walk too. And as we get to some other spots later today, I'll tell you more about the Jersey Devil more about some of the sightings and some of the history of it. Like I said, we'll be camping <laughs> out in the Pine Barrens later today. We're not really in the heart of the Pine Barrens right here. We're actually in the Edwin, <coughs> Edwin Forsyth National Wildlife Refuge right near the coast. But this is where the story originates. Like I said, just back behind me on the other side of the woods is the little town of Leeds Point where the story started. So I don't know if the Jersey Devil ever visits, ever visits its home woods. We'll keep our eyes open. Of course, he's not known to be out during the daytime either. Most of it comes out at night. So that's why I said maybe we'll, when we're camping this evening, maybe we'll go for a little, a little night hike. We'll see. All right, so we are in another section of the Pine Barrens. This is one of the old ghost towns that you can find out here. This is an old paper mill. Looks like an, could be one of the hauntings for the Jersey Devil maybe? So all kinds of stories and tales of people being chased or terrorized by the Jersey Devil as they were in the woods or went out of their house at night, tend to the livestock, or tried to get up early in the morning and go to work. In around 1909, there was a whole bunch of sightings all over New Jersey, Delaware, and Pennsylvania of the Jersey Devil. You know, people, police were looking for it, people were giving rewards for it, and uh, schools and mills like this one back here were shutting down. So why were they shutting down? Well, because people were afraid to leave their house to walk you know, early in the morning to work in a place like this or to leave home in the evening to walk through the woods to get back to home. Not just mill workers like this, but school, you know, school children. So sometimes there was not enough children in the school, so they just shut school down or shut these mills down. It didn't last terribly long, but there was a time when the scare of the Jersey Devil was doing that. 
All right, so here we are in the in the thick of the Pine Barrens. Almost feels like a perfect spot to encounter something out of the ordinary. You know, throughout the not just the decades, but the centuries, you know, since since 1750s, people have been claiming to see the Jersey Devil, either just to catch a glimpse of it, something watching them from the woods. Some people claim to be chased by it. Just seeing its dark red eyes staring at them. Supposedly it lets out a horrifying scream too. It's a way of scaring people. And as I mentioned earlier, sightings are not just confined to New Jersey. He's been sighted near, in a neighboring states such as Pennsylvania, my home state. As far up as uh, Lock Haven, up in North Central PA, there are sightings. And by uh, what you might call legit people, like police officers and folks like that, who wouldn't have a reason to really to lie. So, and of course, there's all kinds of horror stories online, past and present. Plenty of modern stories, too, of people warning you not to do what I'm doing right now, not to hike alone in the Pine Barrens. Because of what you might encounter. All right, but this is a <laughs> Jersey Devil or not, this is a beautiful little section of forest. These are like cedar trees here. But anyway, we might, like I said, go out tonight in the dark. But there are supposed to be some uh, strong thunderstorms this evening between eight and nine, so we'll see. I have to wait till after that to go out. All right. You know, definitely, if you're gonna see something like the Jersey Devil, this is definitely the place I feel like you would encounter it in here. All right, it is approaching evening here in the Pine Barrens of New Jersey. There are those storm clouds coming. Stormy night might be a good night to come across the Jersey Devil, huh? I don't know. I don't know if he likes stormy nights or not. But yeah. The woods is starting to settle down for the evening. We'll see, like I said, I'm not sure how long it'll thunderstorm tonight, but maybe we'll try to get out, do a little bit of night walk. See what we can see. All right. So we are out here at night. It's about 10:30. Storms have stopped. So just go for a little walk in the dark. <laughs> The last thing we want to see is a pair of large red beady eyes staring at us from back in the woods. Although it might make for a good video, not really what we want to see. Yeah, I've read all kinds of stories online about people warning you don't hike alone in the Pine Barrens and all kinds of stuff like that. I see people being chased, screamed at, all kinds of stuff. But here we are. <laughs> in the Pine Barrens at night, walking by herself. 
getting bitten by mosquitoes. <laughs> Here's the main road. Just kind of curious to see what the main road looked like till we got a ton of rain. Cause we gotta get out of here in the morning. Yeah. So what? You know, people that are seeing things. You know, what exactly is it that they're seeing when they come out here? Which is not entirely a bad thing. <laughs> uh, I guess I laugh a little nervously. It's I don't know. I walk around the Pine Barrens at night, Jersey Devil or not, is a little creepy. Staring at you from off in the woods. All right, we're not gonna stay out here forever. I'm just gonna go for a quick little walk, and we'll head back to the safety of the tent. Get back to sleep. It just looks like another road over here. All right. I suppose if I was some die-hard Jersey Devil researcher, I'd. Spent hours out here in the woods walking around. <gasps> Hope that's a piece of trash I just stepped on, I think. Must be an old water bottle down there. Yeah, it's quiet out here. Or is it too quiet? <laughs> All right. Not even any little critters. No, I mean little little tiny pairs. I wouldn't, you know, seeing a little tiny pair of red eyes wouldn't be that awful either. Yeah, what'd you think? If you turn around the corner, and there it was this huge kangaroo-like creature, you know, like hooves and horse head and big bat wings and horns and that forked tail, just like big red beady eyes, just like staring at you and also it just screams at you. Um, yeah, I'd be getting it. Well, nowhere I'd be, if it was, my camp is this way, so that'd be problematic. Because this is the way I'd want to go. Hop in my Jeep, I guess, and get out of here. That would be problematic. All right. All right, but well, there's my camp. So I think we'll, I think we'll call it good. Head back to bed. Well, we survived the South Jersey Pine Barrens without any sort of a encounter with the Jersey Devil. In case you're wondering, I wasn't really expecting to encounter anything, but it's just part of the adventure. So but yeah, that'll probably it. I'm actually back home in back, my backyard now. I forgot to film an outro when we were out in the Pine Barrens. Other things I was doing too. But yeah, I'd be curious to know if if you yourself have had any kind of experience in the Pine Barrens uh, concerning the Jersey Devil or even something else strange down the Pine Barrens. Now that I've been there myself, got a taste for things. I'd just be curious to see what anybody else out there has experienced or stories. Uh, so if you have any, you can put down in the comments below. I'd love to read them. But anyway, thanks for coming along on this venture and uh, I'll see you on the next one.